Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Takahiro Yagi, CEO of Kaikado, Japan's oldest tea caddy manufacturer. Its tea caddies are simply designed and crafted with precision to protect the leaves from moisture. The quintessentially Japanese traditional crafts are even part of the permanent collection at the world famous Victoria and Albert Museum in London. As a sixth generation tea caddy maker, Yagi is attempting to innovate tradition. We asked him about the beauty of tea caddies. We're trying to make something that keeps the tea fresh, helps the leaves retain their aroma and flavor, make it as simple as possible. And our big goal is to make something that customers will use for a long time. These tea caddies were made by Yagi. Copper colored, silver colored, and gold colored. The metallic items have a distinct eye-catching color and luster. It's tin. We use that on the inside. On the outside, we change it up. It's basically a two-layer structure with tin on the inside. And on the outside, we have either copper, tin, or brass. We make three types. Copper ones are, how should I put it, copper colored. And brass ones are gold colored, basically. And tin ones are silver colored. If you had different teas, you could differentiate them based on the exterior. So it's very handy. Part of the design is meant to be functional. The tea caddies are not just visually appealing. They have also been designed for practical use, specifically protecting tea leaves from moisture. Put the lid on, and voila! Slowly, it seals itself. The weight of the lid gradually pushes out the air as it sinks into place. It's an airtight seal. Next, the most important thing is that heat doesn't get inside. So the two circles, the inner circle and the outer circle, need to match up. Otherwise, it's not airtight. So they need to be tight. And if the spacing is too wide, air will get inside. And if it's too tight, you can't get it open. You find that delicate balance. That's how you get this lid that just falls into place smoothly. Yagi's tea caddies are also known for their patina. Patina refers to how the luster of the surface ages with time. We don't do anything to the surface. The surface is naked. We ship it out as is. Copper ones age the fastest of the three. It ages to a color like this in about a year to two to three years. The oils on your hand, on your palm, have the biggest effect on the color. By rubbing it with your palm, you get colors like this. As for tin, the middle one is about 20 or 30 years old. The one on the right is about 40 years old. It's a gradual change. And then, as for brass, the gold color turns into a color like this. Whether the pink manifests strongly or the yellow manifests strongly depends on the balance of acidity and alkalinity of the oils on your hand. That determines the color. So the change in color depends on who's using it. That's part of the experience we want you to enjoy. Kaikado is based in Kyoto a city known for a variety of traditional crafts. It was founded in 1875. It's Japan's oldest tea caddy maker, known for being the first to introduce metal into its manufacturing process.
With the Industrial Revolution, tin was being mass-produced in England, so this new material called tin was being imported from there. And our founder was very good with his hands. And apparently, he was asked to make caddies using this material, and that was the beginning. Up until then, tea caddies and tea itself were expensive, but around that time, tea was spreading to the common people, and they needed something to store the tea leaves. I believe that tea caddies were the tool that propped up the aroma and flavor of Japanese tea. Tea caddies served as an important pillar of Japanese tea culture. However, several generations later, around the time Yagi's father headed the family business, danger would arrive in an unexpected form. Tea in plastic bottles became widely available, resulting in a dramatic drop in the number of consumers using tea caddies. Up until my grandfather's time, tea caddies were part of daily life. People took their existence for granted. Now we have bottled tea. People don't use caddies that much anymore. So when it came time for me to start hunting for a job, my father told me in no uncertain terms, become a salary man. A salary man has it easier. The future of traditional crafts were suddenly very cloudy. People at the time were looking elsewhere. They were saying these traditional industries would wane. After graduating from university, Yagi decided to start working as a salesman at a store in Kyoto selling traditional crafts. There, he saw something that would open his eyes to new possibilities for tea caddies. I still remember it. An American came in and happened to buy one of our tea caddies. I was intrigued, so I asked what she was going to use it for. It wasn't a gift, it was for her kitchen. And not just for tea. She said she wanted to use it in her kitchen to store nuts, beans, and the like. That's when it hit me. If you considered that our tea caddies could be used in the kitchen, you could sell them to people around the world. If you only focus on the domestic market, everything could fall apart. But if you could market to consumers around the world, well, I figured I could at least make enough profit for me to get by. So I went to my father and told him I wanted to return. Yagi left his job at 25 and began apprenticing under his father to become a tea caddy craftsman. There, he came to learn the depth of the craft tradition. When you get down to the details, there are about 130 steps to making a tea caddy. You start with a large sheet like this, and first you cut that up into tea caddy-sized pieces. Then you split that into two groups, for the body and for the lid. You shape it into a cylinder so that it becomes a certain diameter, then you solder it. You make the individual parts like that, then you hammer it out to make the diameters match up, then you put them together. Then you polish it, add the finishing touches, and ship them out. That's the process in a nutshell. It's a job that requires perseverance. There's a key step that is challenging even for seasoned craftsmen. Crafting the part of the body and lid that joins together to create a seal. Take this tea caddy, this silver colored area right around here. It's actually slightly curved out. It looks straight, but the silver part is very slightly curved out. So when the lid comes down, that's where the air is sealed out. The difficult part is how much it should be curving out. So you shape the seal by hammering it and smoothing it out. You're hammering a cylinder, so the material has nowhere to go but out. Where your hammer falls, you get these subtle bumps, and you try to find the perfect fit. 
How hard should you tap and how many times? That's all by feel. It's taken many years to learn that from my father. Under the guidance of his father, Yagi fully dedicated himself to mastering the family craft. As a sixth generation tea caddy maker, he took it upon himself to start conducting product demonstrations overseas. With my tools in tow, I went to a tea shop in the UK. They put me up for about a week in their upstairs guest room, and every day I'd do sales demos. They even held some special events. I spent a week selling our products. That was our first overseas experience. I wasn't expecting much, but we ended up doing quite well, about $9,000 in sales. It was catching on as a kitchen implement, like that American customer all those years ago. Not just tea, but pasta, for example. Or we made canisters for coffee. We made water pitchers, teapots, things like that. We made trays. Taking our products overseas has really broadened our offerings. Yagi is currently looking to foster new demand within Japan. This is Kaikado Cafe, which opened its doors in 2016. He hopes to attract young customers who've never had a personal encounter with traditional crafts. I'm 44 right now, and I think a 20-year age difference puts you worlds apart, culturally speaking. If you want to infiltrate their world, you can't come in from on high, respect these traditional crafts. You'll turn them off. For them, that's not their culture. That's not their lifestyle. But in the form of a cafe, everybody nowadays goes to cafes. So we can show how tea caddies are an organic part of what we do. The cups we use are traditional crafts as well, and they feel very organic. If they don't know these crafts, they can't have an opinion of them. So the first step is to spread awareness. That's important. Looking to make traditional crafts a more familiar presence, Kaikado developed these products. At first glance, they look like ordinary tea caddies. But open the lid, and music plays. A major home appliances maker was trying to envision what a comfortable life would be like 100 years from now. So we made a Bluetooth speaker that connects to your phone. The caddies have a real speaker unit inside with a sensor. And when you open it, the sensor triggers the music. We started discussing about how we could turn these tea caddies with this elegant lid into some kind of home appliance, something that switched on when you open the lid and switched off when you close the lid. We ended up hitting it off with their team, and those speakers were born. In a way, you're sealing away sound into this tea caddy. In that sense, you can seal away many things in them. You could seal away things that mean a lot to you. We're making the same product, but trying different ways to sell its appeal. The craft is the same, but you tweak it according to the times. It's about adjusting over and over again. If you do that, you just may find new, unexpected demand along the way. Feel the spirit of your ancestors. Think of your descendants. Craftspeople live their lives on a timeline, a continuum, the result of myriad influences. You feel the legacy of your father, your grandparents, and your great-grandparents, the things that they did for you to be here. At the same time, I think with each step that you take now, you have to think about your kids and your theoretical grandkids. Thinking about these things is important. That's what will serve as the foundation for a tea caddy making tradition that lasts for a hundred years. That's important to me. For me, making tea caddies is life itself. <laughs>